How's it, guys? Um, Jamie DCO here. Today I'm going to be talking about vibration dampness. Okay. On my quad and my tricopter that I have already, I'm waiting for the quad's part, um, I've got an issue with vibration. So what I'm doing is I'm molding my own vibration dampeners. You can see it there. It's, um, it's got a 2 mil side here, 2 mil side there. This light's a bit intense. Um, and I've got a 1 mil gap in the middle. What it did was I made a mold that I can use a 1 or a 3 mil gap, and then it's just got a hole through the center. So that goes between my on my plate, bolt goes through the middle. For my tricopter, on the other hand, um, I don't have big holes in it, it's over here, um, and I was using a bolt on this side, and then I was using a piece of silicon rubber hose to hold it in, but I had a near fatal crash this weekend and it ripped that board clean off. So what I've done is I've, I have a second mold that I made during my lunch break uh, that will cast this. Uh, what it is is it's the same silicon. Um, let me just get this thing in the light. Uh, same silicon. Got a bolt cast in that side and it's got a nut cast in this side. Um, I had a bolt laying around here which I've now gone and misplaced. Oh, here's it here. Okay, um, I've got this little bolt over here. So then that will just screw onto the end. Okay, you guys get the idea, it'll screw on there. Or you can, in the same mold, I designed it originally, that you could cast a bolt out of both ends. Um, but right now I want to bolt it down like that to my tricopter, and then my board will just slip over here on my KK board. And this will absorb a lot of the vibration. What I'm going to do now is show you how to make a mix that will go hard in a mold using your general purpose silicon. I'm using marine silicon. Um, the problem with it is that it's, uh, it's got acetic acid to activate it. And what happens is in a mold it takes forever to go hard. I've got previous experience with it. The way to go around that, I found an article on the net. You use cornstarch. They recommend a 1 to 1 ratio. I would recommend a slightly less. It gives you a softer rubber. So I'm going at the moment, I would say probably about a one, one third to two third mix. Um, I'm just mixing in here with my little propeller. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to load the stuff up and then I'll continue with the video. Okay guys, uh, what I've got here is my mold. This over here is the mold for the grommet. So it's basically just a simple two part mold. Still dirty from last night's casting. It still takes about eight hours to go hard properly with the silicon, but I mean, casting overnight's fine. What it is is I turn it on a lathe. I drilled through a 4.2 mil hole, and then I used um, I left it a bit longer, uh, and then I drilled in with a 10.5 bit, and then used a 10 mil end mil to drill that flat in there. That's two mil deep. Then I turned that as well, drilled an eight mil hole through it, and parted it off at one millimeter length um, and then I've got this one that's two mil and ten mil diameter and that just goes over there over that one you fill it up and you push a bolt through the middle that's the one mold that's for the grommets and then this is a slightly more complicated mold um, like I said it's still got stuff in it from my castings last night uh, this one the recess goes in ten millimeter same ten diameter but I drilled in a four millimeter hole you can see it down the bottom there. I drilled that in for 25 mils, and then the balance I drilled a 2.5 hole and tapped it M3. So what that gives me is this screw over here now allows me to adjust the end stop of my bolt. So when I put the bolt in there, it allows me to set the, the amount of thread that's going to stick out. So like there, that's how much the gap was. That I just set however much I really want to set it. Um, the other side to that mold, um, sorry, as you might notice there's a hole over there, that was going to be my casting hole, but I don't have a syringe, so I'll show you guys how I do it now. Then this one, there's just a 2 mil recess in there, uh, same story with the bolt in there, except this one I'm putting a nut on. So what I do is I thread this one right out, um, well, out as much as I need to, and then I pop that little M3 nut onto it, like that. Uh, then I fill up and I compact it. And that little mold goes together as well. The silicon with the cornstarch is quite thick, so it holds the mold together by itself. You don't need any clamping or anything. Uh, those are my two molds. So now I'm going to mix up a bit of silicon, and then I will cast it and show you guys how to do that. Okay, now this part I've got to um, do from my snazzy headgear, my, my in-flight recording system. It's made out of a hard hat and a camera. So I'm sorry for the, if there's any bad footage, but I'm going to try and mix it all here for you guys. 
Okay, so I've got my cornstarch in. I just measured that out with the propeller, like so. Okay, um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my silicon. I've just capped it with a cap I made, and then I'm going to. I don't have a corking gun, so right now I'm just using. I'm using about that much. I don't want to use. I don't want to waste. So or waste excessively. Then I just parts it off with the propeller, which is now just spread silicon down my pants, but anyway, so we just do that, okay, um, now I've been doing this for a couple nights now, I've discovered there's a bit of a method to doing it, what you do is you just want to keep turning it, you turn it till it's all stuck to the propeller, and then you do that, scrape it all off, okay, and then you do it again, and scrape it off, similar to how you would make um, dough, and then you do it again, Okay. And I tend to smear it a bit, scrape it off again, and then you try to get it all back to the bottom. It's the trick, just to get it all to the bottom. But there we go. Okay, it's all mixed up nicely. It's all one solid bit. It's actually all on my blade at the moment. But all you do is you mix it till you've got no more powder left in the bottom. Okay. Now casting the molds full. What I do is with this little mold here, the grommet mold, I've got an M4 bolt that I use. It's got a bit of silicon from a previous one. I push it through, and then I take my spatula. Let me just put this on the camera. Um, I'll drop some silicon because it looks like I don't have enough here. But anyway, okay. No, I don't. Okay. You know, and what it does, I take it like that, and then I just smear it in. Here, you want to go because you're going to be pressing it out. You want to pack a bit more than you need to. Oh, it's my sore finger. Okay, um, so you do that, so now it's packed, then you take the spacer disc, it's going to give you your 8mm diameter hole that you're going to go through, and then what I do is I take the other side, and I take this side now, and I pack it full, like properly full, like that, okay, so now it's all bulging and not so lacquer. Then you take it and you push it through, you line up the hole, and then you just force them together. Okay. Because I mixed a little bit too little. Now. Okay. I'm just going to salvage what I can off the OD over here. Okay. There we go. And that's one part cast. You just leave it to go hard for eight or so hours. Um, the other nights I try to do one in four hours. And when I split it, this is what happened. It was a bit soft. So it just like mushed. I pulled the, bolt, the nut out of it. Now this one's set up slightly more um, detailed. I use a drill because, well, I'm lazy. So I basically screw the screw through on the short end of my mold. I screw the nut on. Usually I go, when I get the nut on, usually I go, probably say about three or four mil past the end. And then I want to keep it from the edge. I want to keep it about two to three mils. Okay, so it should end up something like that. Mine's just on the inside there. Okay, then what you need is the bolt, which I'm going to find now. Grab the wrong one by mistake. Okay, I'm using a M3 countersink. I mean, yeah, countersink. I could probably be using something else. Uh, the reason I use a countersink is it's what they had at the local hardware store. Okay, then the trick here is to get it inside the hole, which can be a bit tricky. Okay, there we go, I got it in. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it through there. You can see the screw. Um, from the bottom of the taper, two mil is what you need to have uh, sticking out. Okay, and then same story with packing this. You want to pack it lacquer rich because you need it to have a bit of pressure to go around the, the bolt head. So I'm going to pack like that and then I leave, I just leave the middle stood up and it started coming through there. That way when I put pressure, I know that it's going to go all the way around the head of the bolt and it's going to give me a lack of secure fit because this is going to hold on my KK board and my tricopter. Um, I think two weeks ago, I, don't, I didn't make a video of it, but I was flying and my KK board came loose. To be honest, it took me 15 minutes to figure out why the hell my board, uh, my copter kept 
yawing. It just it would not come stable on the yaw. I trimmed it up. I trimmed it down. I checked my servo was working. And I just could not find what was wrong. And it turns out that my KK board, I had a 2A tape down. And it just wouldn't stick uh, on the board I had. Okay, this one I've packed really rough. Because what's going to happen now is when I press, it's going to now press behind. It's going to press behind on this one. It's going to give me a really nice feel. Uh, if some of you guys have watched my previous videos, you may have seen that I did vibration dampeners about three or four weeks ago. Um, those ones work great. They really do. But I've got a bit of an issue on my tricopter because what happened was I crashed, again, into a tree and I snapped the Perspex frame I had. And I found a really cool piece of plastic at work. It's from a hydraulic oil drum. It should have been the first key. But anyway, hydraulic oil uh, drum. And it, the 2 a tape doesn't stick to it because it had oil in it, the plastic's oil impregnated. So it doesn't stick, so now I've had to make a bolt-on system. Okay, now the leftovers, okay, I've got enough to cast another one, but unfortunately, during my lunchtime, I only had enough time to make two molds. So I only made the two, but like now that, if you've got something you can put it into to make something cool, you can always do that. But otherwise, guys, thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe and don't forget to rate the articles. Thanks, eh?